Today, for this video, what I want to do is show you how to construct a 90% confidence interval using the TI-84 graphing calculator. So what we have here is in a survey of 1,500 females, ages 18 to 64, 996 say that they have gone to the dentist in the past year. So with this one, what we want to do is we first have to figure out what kind of confidence interval we are going to be constructing. And with this, our key information that we have is that we have a proportion or a part of a sample. So anytime that you have a part of a sample or they're describing how many out of a sample, that should lead you to um, knowing that you have to use what is called the one proportion Z interval. So this is the name of the interval that we are going to be constructing. There are a couple of conditions that have to be met in order for the central limit theorem to kick in. The biggest one is that n times p hat has to be greater than or equal to 5, and n times q hat also has to be greater than or equal to 5. Okay, n times p hat just means the number of successes. So n times p hat is our successes. And n times q hat is just our number of failures. Okay, so in this case, a success would be considered that they have gone, that they answer yes to the question, they have gone to the dentist in the past year. So we can see from the problem that we have 996 successes, which is definitely greater than or equal to 5. And n times q hat, we could find by doing 1500 minus 996, that would be our number of failures. Um, so in this case, we would have 504 failures. Um, which is also greater than or equal to 5. And I found this number right here by doing 1 or doing the total sample 1500 minus 996. So as long as this is met, it's important. Um, it's also important to have a random sample. And with this one, it is a random sample. Um, even though it doesn't say it, um, I forgot to write it down, but it is a random sample. That's always important. Um, so with this, what we're going to do now is we're going to construct our interval. So our interval is found by doing um, p hat, which is known as our point estimate, plus or minus our zc, which is our critical value, um, times the square root of p hat times q hat over n. If you wanted to, you could say that this is the error part right here, and you could say another way that you could do this is you could say that it's really p hat minus the error, and our population proportion is between that and p hat plus our error, where e is equal to zc or z star, depending upon your text p hat, q hat over n. So this is the formula that we are going to use. Um, your calculator will go through and find the answer to this, but a lot of times you have to show work. Um, so I'm not going to show all of the work just yet. I am going to generate some stuff in my calculator. Um, to get p hat, p hat is just going to be our um, number of successes, so that would be our 996. Um, divided by the number in our sample, which is 1500. So you can find that, but when I run it in my calculator, it will actually give me the p hat. Um, or I could just set it up as 996 over 1500. That also works. But this part right here, I am going to show you how to find in your calculator. This is known as the critical value. And basically, the critical value for this is found. Um, by looking at our level of confidence. So our level of confidence is 90%. Okay, and so basically what that means is that we want 90% of our area to be in between. So our critical value can be found by doing inverse norm. One half of one minus the area or the level of confidence, comma zero comma one. Okay, so let's go ahead and find this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to second distributions, inverse norm, which is option three. Our area is going to be one half of one minus our level of confidence, 
Um, you could also, I forgot that with this one, traditionally, let me switch calculators. If you have this option, you can actually just type in center and your area, you would just put in 0.9. Most calculators don't have this option though, so I'm gonna to switch to a different calculator. And you can see that it's negative 1.645 or positive 1.645. So basically our ZC is going to be 1.645. Typically we round to two decimal places, but this is a special case where it's directly in the middle. So they go ahead and leave it as three decimal places. Um, so let me go back to my calculator. I'm gonna switch I have the option of being able to switch to a different calculator and I don't know where it is. Hold on. All right, so I've switched to the TI-84 Plus C um, Silver Edition. And with this one, what I wanted to show you is this is how it will show up in most calculators. So if I do the um, second VARs, second distributions and choose inverse norm, I would have to put in, it doesn't give me the option of the center left and right. Um, so I'm going to just change this to 1 minus 0.9 and then hit enter and I get negative 1.645 and with this you can put down the positive or the negative by doing the center when it shows you that it gives you both it's because it's going to be in between that so most of the time we just write down the positive one since we're doing plus or minus it really doesn't matter which one you use okay and so now that I found the ZC and I have all the information to show the work what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into here and I'm going to hit stat and tests and I'm going to go to I have to scroll down this one is actually on the next um, I have to go to where it's one proportion Z interval don't just pick the Z interval that's for means and we don't have means so we want to find the one proportion Z interval in my calculator it's option A X is going to be our number of successes so in this case we would put in the 996 N is going to be the number in our sample, which is 1500. And then you put in your confidence level. And this, um, by putting in your confidence level, it will find the Z score or the critical value for you and automatically plug it into the formula. Okay. And so with this, you can see that P hat is 0.664. So now I can write down all of my work if I needed to. Okay. So I could say 0.664 is going to be P hat plus or minus 1.645 times p hat which is 0.664 times q hat which remember q hat let me just go ahead and write that down really quickly remember q hat is always 1 minus p hat so in this case if i do 1 minus 0.664 i get 0.336 Okay. And then I would divide it by the number in my sample, 1500. This way you showed work so that um, whoever is assessing it can see that you found the correct critical value, um, that you were able to plug in both your P hat and your Q hat and you knew what you were doing, you used the correct formula. And then you can just write down your confidence interval. So remember that this is the interval that is generated, the 0.64394 and the 0 0.68406. So this gives us our confidence interval and it's always important to interpret your results in the context of the original problem. So we could say with 90% confidence, the proportion of so this is how you would always start with any one proportion z interval you're going to say with whatever level of confidence and then you're going to say the proportion of and then you're going to go back to your problem and look at what is the context so we're talking about females ages 18 to 64 so the proportion of females who say, and now we want to look at the rest of the context. In this case, remember they are saying that they have gone to the dentist in the past year. And we're talking about the entire population. So um, the proportion of all females ages 16 to 24 who say they have visited the dentist
in the past year, is between these two values. So we would say 64.39% and 68.41%. Okay, so with 90% confidence, the proportion of females ages 16 to 24 who say that they have visited the dentist in the past year is between 64.39% and 68.41%. It's always important that when you're interpreting this that you do not say anything about the sample. You know that the sample proportion is in between because that's what you use to generate it. Remember that confidence intervals, they're either going to capture the true proportion or they're not. Um, so with this, you're not 90% confident that you captured it. Um, what a 90% confidence interval is saying that 90% of intervals that are generated from this population will contain the true proportion. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.